Good morning and welcome to Stock Market Today for Wednesday, November 6, 2019. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. Find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where you get daily stock ideas for you to consider in your inbox every trading day before the market opened. So U.S. equities were mostly higher in Tuesday's trading with value continuing to outperform growth from a thematic perspective. At the sector level, energy, financials, and materials outperformed while REITs and utilities lagged. Treasuries were under renewed pressure across the curve with the 10-year yield moving higher. Dollar was stronger versus the yen and the euro. Gold finished down 1.8%. WTI crude uh, was higher by 1.2%. So trade remains the key driver of near-term strength in the market. Uh, some commentary yesterday about the U.S. reconsidering plans for tariffs in December, and maybe considering even eliminating tariffs implemented in September. So as we get to the desk this morning, though, we're digesting all of this. Futures are little changed. Asian markets were mostly higher overnight, though the upside was limited. European markets are mixed this morning. Treasuries are stronger across the curve following that big backup in yields over the last two days. Dollar is lagging both the yen and the euro. Gold up 30 basis points. WTI crude down 30 basis points. And as we look at the market here, you know, a little bit of a pause above the breakout level is the best way to kind of call this, right? We gapped higher on Monday, but had some, you know, just some, Range bound trading for the rest of the day. Yesterday, a bit of a pause. So we're still looking at those key levels down below. 2890 is the 200 day moving average. And then the August lows, I mean, those kind of feel further away now. Let's stay focused on near term support in the 2950 to 3000 zone that we have been highlighting. It's these congestion patterns and these gaps that we've seen over the past, call it four to six months. That to me, uh, are, is the real levels that you want to see hold to any pullback in the near term. Now, the RSI remains in bullish ranges and still approaching overbought levels up near uh, 67. Uh, would love to actually, I would love to actually see a, a, a tip, a, a tick over 70. That would give me kind of added confirmation that there's solid momentum behind the trend. Chicken money flow uh, as well is bullish. So the indicators are in line. A little bit of a pause here. Futures not doing much this morning, but holding above that near-term support at around 3,000 uh, is, uh, is key, in my opinion, in the days and weeks ahead. Let's take a look at the market in a minute now. What are we writing about in the note today to Chicken Analytics clients? Well, we talked about the trade comments. Keeping the market near all-time highs. Strength in small caps is a bullish breath development, in my opinion. Now, we've seen the Dow, the Qs, the SPY all trading at new highs. And while small caps are not at new highs yet, they are starting to break topside from a consolidation. And to me, that lends a breath confirmation to the market. Now, we get into breath on Thursdays. But the more markets and the more stocks that are moving in concert with the trend, the more there's a strong breath confirmation to it. So near-term sentiment, though, is at greed levels. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Transports break higher from a one-year range. We'll look at that chart. And as I said, futures point to a roughly flat open here today. For the major indices, you know, with relatively flat trading, we didn't get touch of, um, much of a change in the power bars. The Dow was up 11 basis points, still three bulls to seven bears there. S&P 500 down 11 basis points, 109 to 85 bulls to bears. Call the NASDAQ flat, 2619 bulls to bear small caps, up 10 basis points, 687 to 297. Interesting to me that the bearish names keep falling off here in small caps as small caps move higher. Bonds down tick, sending yields higher on the day. According to the Cheek and Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish, but the major markets are mixed. Let's hit our stock of the day now. Auto generated based on the power gauge rating at Zion's Bank Corp. Z I O N closes at 50 spot 71 yesterday, up a little over 1%. Zion's has that very bullish power gauge rating due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong earnings performance, strong price volume activity, negative expert activity. But when we take the 20 factors in concert, we get that very bullish rating. We have a strong trend, strong industry group, type of name we want to consider. Now, what I'm seeing here is what we call, you've heard me talk about it in the past, but a bullish personality change. So when the rating turns solidly bullish, and then the stock goes from being an underperformer to an outperformer. 
Chicken money flow is bullish. Stock is above the long-term trend line. However, in the near term, it is overbought, as are most of the banks. Now, you've heard me talk about the financials. You've heard me talk about warming to the banks as rates move higher. So a couple of different ways to look at this one, in my opinion. If you're a breakout trader, this, stock, this stock's been in a range. There's no two ways about it. The lows at 38, the highs, I call it 50 to $52. You're buying a breakout through the $52 level if you're a breakout trader and that's your process, right? This is a very bullish stock that's outperforming the market. If your process is to buy breakouts, I can't argue with that here. If you follow a little bit more closely with what we advocate, which is waiting for oversold conditions, i.e. the stock becomes oversold within the context of its bullish trend, then you're going to probably wait a little bit. Or ideally, what you'd love to see is some sideways consolidation here that works off those overbought conditions and sets the stage for a move higher. Either way, Zion's type of name you want to own in, uh, and own it when it fits uh, your particular strategy for setups. Let's look at the sector tracker now. Movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Energy still at the top of the list. Another strong day. I think energy's outperformed or been the leading sector for three days in a row now. Industrials, financials, also at the top of the list. These are all signs of that cyclical rotation that we have been talking about. Tech outperforming over the past few days. We like to see that. We've talked ad nauseum about how tech is the largest weight in the index. Middle of the road comms materials and discretionary. And it really is your defensive areas of the market that are lower and underperforming over the last five days, right? Staples, we've talked about that a little bit, underperforming as the market takes a little bit more of a risk on sentiment. Healthcare traditionally views, viewed as a defensive area of the market. And then obviously your REITs and utilities are solidly defensive, also levered to interest rates inversely correlated, right? So as rates have been rising, we've seen the utilities and the REITs, we went over them, excuse me, yesterday, come under pressure, especially on a relative basis. Now, our industry in focus today is healthcare equipment services, which has been an underperformer over the past six months, lagging the S&P 500 by 2.64%. However, its power bar ratio, which measures future potential, is strong, right? 16 bullish or very bullish stocks for 12 bearish or very bearish stocks. It's ranked number 13 of 21 subsectors uh, that we looked at, and that's unchanged over the past week. Now, some of the names that you may want to consider, I think you really need to be selective in this group. We'll see why. If you're looking for long ideas, the names you want to consider are the ones with very bullish ratings or assure uh, OSUR, Varian Medical, VAR, and Meridian Bioscience, VIVO, all have very bullish shake and power gauge ratings. But the reason I say you want to be selective is number one, this underperformance. And number two is we haven't really broken out yet. If we take a look at the ETF that tracks this group, XHE is the symbol there, it has a neutral ETF power gauge rating. Now, the trend is strong as the fund trades above the long term trend line, but this has really been listless, choppy, call it frustrating trading. Um, for the past year, the group continues to be an underperformer as we discussed, uh, you know, kind of the, the intensity of underperformance waning of late. It really is a mixed bag here. You can see a really well-defined trading range with the lows at 74, the highs at around the $82 level money flow turning bullish, but the fund is overbought in the near term. So for me, if you're an ETF trader, then not enough here for me to get excited about. If you're drilling down to the specific stocks, you really want to focus on the very bullish and bullish stocks. There's 16 of them to choose from, and you want to focus on those stocks that are outperforming the market and get them when they're oversold with bullish money flow. That, to me, uh, is a better setup there. Now, healthcare is a wide, diverse group, right? And you really have to drill down. When we talk about healthcare uh, underperforming, uh, parts of healthcare certainly are, but there are certain parts of healthcare that are doing well as well. So it's one of those broad, diverse groups that you really need to take the analysis down to the industry level, in my opinion. Uh, similar dynamic when you look at groups like consumer discretionary and similar dynamic when you look at groups like uh, like financials. I always think it's important to take that analysis one step further to the industry level. Let's take a look at yesterday's movers and shakers, our gainers and losers in the S&P 500. Kroger had an analyst day and they updated their outlook and investors liked what they heard, sent the stock higher by 11.36%. IFF, International Foods and Flavors, up 8.43% following their earnings announcement. Regeneron, a very bullish stock, rallies by nearly 7% on the heels of their earnings announcement. Macy's, 
benefiting from some rotation of late. If you kind of look near term at the industry groups that have been really performing well over the past three months, you're starting to see retail perk up. Macy's has been a name that I have not been able to get excited about. But if there's a retail rotation going on, we want to pay attention. Macy's up nearly 5.5% yesterday. IPG Photonics has been a volatile one. IPGP up 5.22% on the day. On the loser side of the board, Mylan. This is what I'm talking about when we're talking about healthcare. Generic drug maker down nearly 10% following their earnings announcement. BDX, Becton Dickinson, down uh, 5.4%. Uh, on the heels of their earnings announcement, despite the strength that we've seen in energy of late, Oxy couldn't buck the fact that their earnings announcement disappointed investors. OXY down five and a quarter, still maintains a very bearish shaken power gauge rating. IDXX, another name that's been volatile of late, down 5.2%. Nothing really company specific on the news front. And IQV down four and a half percent, a neutral stock. Nothing company specific to drive the trading in that name. Let's talk about it now. It's Wednesday. We do sentiment. Sentiment moves further towards greed levels is kind of the key theme that I've been focused on for the past couple of weeks. Here's the 13-day moving average of the CBOE equity put call ratio. And if you look at just the total put call ratio, it's a similar dynamic. We are moving towards levels that have tended to mark pauses in equity rallies. Now, not quite at the lower bound yet of these extremes, uh, but certainly sentiment, not the tailwind that it was when we were rebounding out of the August consolidation and not the tailwind that it was uh, earlier in October when sentiment was much more fearful. We're getting closer towards greed levels when we look at this 13 period moving average of the equity put call ratio. Another one of the metrics that I look at is the CNN fear greed index, and that's at 89. That's on a scale of zero to 100. 89 is a position of extreme greed. So when we kind of think about what that could mean for the market here. Yeah, we've had a great rally. Sentiment was a tailwind. Now maybe it's a little bit of a headwind. To me, does that mean you run out and sell everything? Absolutely not. To me, what it means is you definitely have to be more selective on the long side of the portfolio when looking for names, right? Like when we talk about Zions waiting for that oversold condition. Uh, at the same time, just want to continue to manage your risk. If you have names that are working higher, move up your stops and manage your risk appropriately. I would also highlight that the VIX, uh, the, the market's fear gauge uh, has moved lower of late as well. So sentiment, definitely not the tailwind that it was uh, tail end of August, certainly not the tailwind that it was back in, in early October either. Just something to be mindful of. Small caps rally as rates lift. Now I talked about small caps rallying uh, being an indication of broadening breadth in the market. But it's interesting to me that it's happened as rates have moved higher as well. I always like to pay attention to the intermarket relationships, right? How do movements in one asset class impact movements in another asset class? So what's jumped out at me is that the small caps, which have not been able to get out of their way pretty much for the entirety of 2019, right, in this choppy range, break top side of this declining trend line as rates move higher. And if we look at the bottom of the chart here, we can see that the 63 day rolling correlation, 63 days, roughly three months of trading is generally positive. It's not a positive 100% of the time, but the majority of the time there's a positive relationship between rates and the small cap. So again, to the extent that rates continue to move higher, we would look for small caps to continue to move higher as well. And why is that encouraging? Because it's more participation in the market, right? The more stocks that are moving higher with the market, the more likely the market is to continue to move higher as well. You can see the small caps above their rising 200-day moving average as they break top side of this consolidation. And finally, transports break from the range. We looked at industrials yesterday. Take a look at the transports here. Breaking, they've been in a choppy range for the past year, breaking out in a move that appears to be confirmed by momentum as the RSI begins to shift to bullish ranges. Notice on recent pullbacks has not become oversold. Bullish ETF rating, 10 bulls to five bears, and starting to break a downtrend line and move higher relative to the SPY. So some of these lagging groups, we've been highlighting them here for the past week, week and a half now, are starting to show improving relative strength. That's the rotation that you always want to be aware of and mindful of in the market. That's going to wrap it up for today. 
I thank you all for taking the time to spend, uh, spend your morning with me. I will be back here tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday, everyone.